Welcome back to the channel. My name's Big Chris. I've still got my big receding hairline. And in today's video, we're talking about the largest cities on the planet for the last 2,000 years. We're talking about bad boy Baghdad. We're talking about the crazy Constantinople. We're talking about the lovely... Lo no. No, get rid of that. The lovely London, not the dirty London. In this video, we're talking about the populations that make these cities the largest cities on the planet. We're going to go from the year zero and we're going to make our way all the way up to the present year 2022. Now, of course, to do this, I've had to look at all these people. These are the experts who have spent their lives dedicated to finding out which cities were the largest how big their populations were compared to how big the cities were. They've been all over the world and they've compiled loads of different surveys. And what I've done is kind of got a little bit of them all, put them together, put them in this video, which is why this introduction is the longest introduction ever. So let's get started. So big Chris, 2000 years, big cities, let's go. So the first city and the first numbers are pretty simple. So in year zero, the largest city on the planet is Rome. And it has a population of around one million people. Now, Rome is often associated with Julius Caesar. But by zero, Julius Caesar has been dead around 40, 50 years. Now we move on to the year 100. And once again, Rome is the largest city with once again, roughly one million people. But by the time we get to the year year 200, the population has boosted a little bit to a roughly 1.2 million people. By the time we get to the year 300, it's slightly decreased again, back down to 1 million people. But here's the thing. By the time we get to the year 400, we then start to see the decline in Rome. And the population is somewhere in the region of 800,000 to 500,000. So the number really fluctuates in the year 400. Now, by the time we get to 476, we fully understand why Rome's population has plummeted. And that is because this is the year when Rome finally falls to the Germanic tribes of Europe and it ends the Western Roman Empire. So Rome's population plummets, which means that by the time we get to the year 500, its place has been taken. But don't worry, Romans, because it's the eastern cousin that takes its place, which is Constantinople. Just a quick history lesson for anybody that doesn't know. Rome and Constantinople are both Roman cities. They're actually both capital cities. Rome was the original capital, but then we have the emperor, Constantine the Great, and he sees the writing on the wall. So what he does is he moves the capital from Rome to Constantinople, which is where modern day Istanbul is today. He moves the capital to Constantinople. So when Rome does fall, in some respects, it doesn't matter because Rome can continue under its new capital, Constantinople. And that's where we are at the year 500. Now, in the year 500, we also have another contestant. So we've got Constantinople, but we also see the first signs of a Chinese city known as Zhang Kang. Now, both Constantinople and Zhang Kang have 500,000 people as their population. By the time we get to the year 570, we can also add a third city to the list, which is the city of Tessiphon. This is the capital of the Persian Empire. We then move on to the next century, which is the year 600. And here we have three cities that are in contention. They all have 500,000 people. We have Constantinople. We have the Persian Tessiphon. But we also now have a different Chinese city known as Shan'an. All of them 500,000 people. In the year 651, we then lose Tessifron from this list forever. We never see it again. And it has a decline and drops off this list. And the reason being is due to the rise of Islam within the Middle East. So just a quick history is that the Middle East was dominated by two empires. You had the Byzantines, their capital at Constantinople. You had the Sasanian Persians, their capital at Tessiphon. And them two used to fight each other quite a lot. And when they were at their weakest, a new power, the Islamic power, came up 
expanded their borders and that is why Tessifon and both Constantinople, their populations start to decrease while the Muslim population and their cities get bigger and bigger. And because of that, Tessifon drops off this list because it's invaded and conquered by the Muslims. And this results in, by the time we get to the year 700, Shan'an, the big city in China, is the only one standing at the top with a population of around 500,000. By the time we get to the year 800, Shan'an is still the largest city with once again roughly 500,000. But this is where all that Muslim expansion now takes place and makes a big difference to our story. Because by the time we get to the year 900, it's Baghdad that becomes the largest city on the planet with roughly around 900,000 people. Now, Baghdad is one of the seats of the golden age of Islam. This is where all the great minds of the Muslim world end up and they create some of the most wonderful and most magnificent inventions ever. These people are looking at the stars. These people are inventing things way before the Industrial Revolution. These people are creating what is known as the House of Wisdom, which is the Library of Baghdad. Some of the best writers, the most beautiful literature, all compiled into Baghdad, which is the reason why Baghdad skyrockets in population and goes to the top of our list as the biggest, most populated city on the planet in the year 900. By the time we get to the year 1000, the turn of the millennium, Baghdad sits as number one with a population of 1.2 million people. A century later, in 1100s, Baghdad's still number one, 1 million 200,000 people. By the time we get to the year 1200, we now have three contestants. So the first one is once again Baghdad. But the second two are two Chinese cities. You've got Hongzhou and Kaifeng. Now, Hongzhou and Kaifeng are both capital cities within one country. But over in China, we have the Song Dynasty. And the Song Dynasty is quite large. So what they do to administer it is they cut it in half. You have the Northern Song Dynasty and the Southern Song Dynasty. The Northern capital is Kaifeng and the Southern capital is Hongzhou. And that's why you have two capital cities. The populations rise, they skyrocket and they join Baghdad at the top of the tree. By the time we get to 1258, we have to say goodbye to Baghdad. And that is because of the Mongol invasions. The Mongols have come off the Mongolian steppes, they've sweeped into the Middle East, and they've completely burnt Baghdad to the ground. So when I was talking about all that fantastic work, such as the, the House of Wisdom, the great libraries with all them books, it was all burnt, all destroyed forever. And that was due to the Mongol invasions. Now, when we get to the year 1300s, the only city that stands alone is Hongzhou with around 1.5 million people. By the time we get to the 1400s, we have a Chinese city sitting at the top, but it's a different one. It's known as Xingling. And Xingling is the new Ming dynasty capital. So we've now, the Song dynasty has collapsed and a new Ming dynasty has risen. And the first emperor decides to move his capital to Xingling. It's a brand new capital city. And because it's a new capital, the people flock to this new city, which means its population rises. And we have roughly around 1 million people flock to this brand new city. But don't get too comfortable because Jingling doesn't remain the capital. And in fact, in 1421, the emperor moves his capital to the brand new city of Beijing. And Beijing has a population of somewhere between 600,000 all the way up to 1 million. In the 1500s, the largest city is Beijing with 1 million people. By the 1600s, it's once again Beijing, 1 million people. By the time we get to the 1700s, we have a brand new contestant for number one in the world. And it's something that you might not expect. It's a place in Thailand known as Iata. And Iata is famous because in the future, there is a king that is born. And this is King Rama I. And he rules over a united Thailand. And in fact, he is the ruler that is the founder of the modern day city of Bangkok. 
Unfortunately for Ayata, it doesn't stay at the top for very long because by the time we get to the 1800s, Beijing has now become number one once again with a population of around 1.1 million people. But even that doesn't last because by the time we get to 1825, we now have a new boy on the block. This is the big bad London, the European superpower. And London has a population in the 1820s of 1.3 million people. Now, this is down to two reasons. The first one is London is considered the heart of the Industrial Revolution. This is where all the agricultural work stops and people start moving into the big cities to work on the factories, the railways, the canals, which means that London benefits from all of this and its population skyrockets. The second part is what we know as Pax Britannica. So this is where Britain stops getting involved in all the wars and politics of Europe and focuses it on itself, which means that its cities can thrive without having to send all of its men off to war. It doesn't have to pay for all these politics in Europe that it doesn't need to get involved in, which means places like London thrive and they get bigger and bigger as the years go by. And in fact, we're going to see London break a record. And here's the record. By 1840, London has expanded that much that it breaks the record. This is the first time ever on this planet that one city holds two million people. And in fact, that's not where London ends, because by the time we get to the 1900s, London has skyrocketed to a population of 6.5 million people. In the year 1925, we have a new entry all the way over in the United States of America. And their largest city is New York City. And this has a big population of 7.7 .7 million people. But wait, it doesn't last long because 40 years later in 1965, we go all the way to the Far East over to Japan. And their largest city, Tokyo, has now risen all the way up to 15, 15 million people. By the time we get to the year 2000, Tokyo is still on top. But it's actually increased by another 5 million people. And it sits at a population of 20 million people. Now that is a lot compared to everybody else. But it doesn't end there. Because this year is 2022. And in Tokyo, which sits at number one, the population is 37.5 million people. All in one city. All walking around like this, cramped, trying to get into places. Nearly 40 million people in one city. That is absolutely incredible. And there we are, everybody. That is the list of the largest cities on the planet for the last 2,000 years. So once again, I'm Big Chris. I've still got that big receding hairline. And thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.